So today we're going to discuss some of the recent and somewhat unexpected discoveries when it comes to black hole collisions. And specifically a recent study that actually discovered something really bizarre, potentially a third compact body in the vicinity of one of the major collisions. But in order to understand why this is important and what all of this means, let's go through some of the history of black hole collisions first and discuss how all of this relates to science. And here there's a really important reminder. For centuries our entire understanding of the universe only came from observing the light. Specifically observing the universe with the telescopes, by gathering electromagnetic radiation allowing us to see stars, allowing us to see galaxies, and of course the famous afterglow of the Big Bang, the cosmic microwave background. But for many decades researchers wondered if there is another way a fundamental new way that the universe could be observed or that the universe can communicate information to us. And so decades ago someone asked the question, what if space-time itself could vibrate carrying information across cosmic distances? And that's of course the realm of gravitational wave sciences, a concept hypothesized by Albert Einstein who also didn't actually believe it would ever be possible to observe them. But once again he was maybe proven to be a little bit incorrect because we can observe them and have done so many many times as of 2025. And it was really thanks to these gravitational ripples that we can now start asking questions about the universe itself, revealing profound insights into the nature of black holes, and even answering questions about the very fabric of space-time, which is technically an ongoing scientific detective work that continues to push boundaries of our knowledge about the universe. But I guess first let's clarify, here we're mostly discussing black holes, the mysterious and still difficult to understand objects that are currently characterized by just three fundamental properties, mass, angular momentum or spin, and electric charge. And though obviously there are different types of black holes out there, it's really only stellar mass black holes that we've so far seen colliding. Although naturally the ultimate goal would be at some point to discover some kind of an ongoing collision between supermassive black holes. But that's something that's currently beyond our technologies. But here one of the fundamental questions in regards to black holes is really about these supermassive black hole giants. Because some of them seem to have masses of billions of solar masses and it's not entirely clear how they formed. And though obviously they could have done so by consuming a lot of gas and dust, for some of them the size and mass is so big that it just does not make a lot of sense if they only grew through some kind of an accretion process. But one of the potential explanations was basically a chain of collisions or a chain of mergers of successively larger and larger black holes that could potentially explain their existence. And this is something that has been speculated and theorized in many previous studies, it's just we don't really have any exact and definitive evidence. Ok, we'll actually come back to this idea in a few minutes. First though, let's briefly discuss the history of gravitational wave detections. Because this all started back in 1974. Here by observing a very famous binary pulsar that you can see simulated right here, referred to as the Hulse Taylor Pulsar, also known as PSR B1913 plus 16, researchers were able to match the orbital decay observed in this very strange binary neutron star system with the predictions from Einstein in regards to gravitational radiation and energy loss. In other words, here by observing the orbit of these two neutron stars, researchers directly confirmed the effects from gravitational waves. The orbit was shrinking and this could only be explained through gravitational wave effects. This eventually led to the Nobel Prize in 1993. And so now that the gravitational waves were officially confirmed, the new ultimate goal became the direct detection. And this eventually led to the very large collaboration known as LIGO an attempt to create a laser-based facility that would use minute deviations from laser interactions in order to detect distant gravitational waves passing through our planet. And though the idea itself was conceived back in the 1960s and 1970s, it literally took at least four decades for this theoretical proposition to finally find something. And here this was the result of major upgrades and a lot of development, with the facility now referred to as Advanced LIGO finally detecting something on September 14, 2015. This was actually just two days after its final upgrades. And so here we had the first ever confirmation of two black holes colliding somewhere out there. This was about 1.3 billion light years away from planet Earth. 
And here the observation was entirely consistent with every single prediction of numerical relativity, literally proving most of the Einsteinian principles overnight. And so this monumental discovery, announced in February of 2016, after months and months of analysis and confirmations, launched a new era in astronomy, gravitational wave astronomy, and also led to another Nobel Prize in 2017. But since that first detection, LIGO, along with its partners Virgo, located in Italy, and Kagra in Japan, have now observed quite a lot of different detections, many of which we've discussed in some of the videos in the description. And actually one of them, detected in 2017, was particularly exciting, because this was a detection of two neutron stars forming a black hole. You can learn more about this in one of the videos below. But as more and more of these black hole collisions started to be discovered, scientists realized that they also produce additional vibrations, such as ring-down effects, kind of similar to a vibrating bell after something heavy strikes it. And it's these final ring-down effects that seem to provide a lot of information about the final product, but also tell us a little bit more about the colliding black holes, especially when it comes to their potential origin. For example, black holes that grow by consuming surrounding gas or through previous mergers generally seem to have much higher spin and produce very different vibrations. And this is different from black holes born from collapsing stars that seem to have lower spin. And so some of these observations and measurements of spin of these black holes based on the observations of these ring downs started to hint at the possibility of some kind of a black hole assembly line that seems to be relatively common in the universe. And this would actually explain why we seem to be seeing so many of these black holes colliding all over the place, even though originally researchers did not believe we would be finding that many. And so gravitational astronomy now had a new goal. They wanted to find some kind of a fingerprint from previous collisions, or possibly from something in the environment where these black holes are currently colliding. And while amongst many detections so far, one seemed to really stand out. GW190814. The signal discovered in 2019 associated with the merger of two compact objects, one with a mass of 23 solar masses, so a typical stellar mass black hole, but the other one was a little bit more bizarre, something with a mass of 2.6 solar masses that's actually still kind of unexplained. Now this is too heavy to be a white dwarf, too heavy to be a neutron star, and potentially too light to be a black hole. So it was essentially something kind of bizarre. But if this was a neutron star, or even if this was some kind of a star, the researchers expected to see some kind of an explosion far away, basically because this is supposed to produce some kind of a kilonova. But despite extensive searches, there seemed to be no optical counterpart, implying that this is maybe just a really tiny black hole whose origin was difficult to explain. Or maybe this was a massive neutron star, but it just became swallowed completely right away. And so this very strange discovery was probably one of the best to investigate to solve some of these initial questions and initial mysteries. And there was actually one initial hypothesis that a lot of scientists wanted to explore. Because of the unusual secondary mass of this relatively small compact object, a lot of scientists started to hypothesize that maybe this is happening in one of these black hole assembly lines. Basically regions with a lot of black hole collisions happening all at once, and many of them leading to masses that are difficult to explain. And to date, only one location seems to make sense for these factories to exist. Vicinity of a supermassive black hole in the center of a galaxy. And especially within some kind of an active galactic nuclei disk. And so in this model, the binary black hole would be merging while orbiting a third compact object, with the third object very likely being the central black hole. And now this hypothesis potentially has its first evidence. This is in a study by Xu Cheng Yang and a team you see right here, where the scientists report compelling evidence supporting the hypothesis for this black hole collision to essentially be around a central massive black hole. But the main focus in this study was on detecting something known as LSA line of sight acceleration. And this acceleration induces what's known as the Doppler shift. So your famous red shift and blue shift. But in this case, this Doppler shift is inside the gravitational wave signal. And though it's very subtle, it is detectable. And specifically detectable in these ring downs produced after the collision. And so here compared to models assuming an isolated binary black hole by including a third compact object, their model seems to create something that actually resembles exactly what was detected. With the overall conclusion being that 
In this case, the source was moving away from the observer with the accelerating rate of approximately 0 0.0015 times the speed of light per second, or roughly around 450 km per second, potentially representing the orbital velocity around the central region. Although here scientists also considered a lot of additional effects. For example, the tidal forces from the central region, the gas drag from the accretion disk itself, or other possible effects, if this was around a supermassive black hole in the middle of a galaxy. With the conclusion being that pretty much all of the observations seem to match what's known as the Romer delay, named after the Danish astronomer Ole Romer. And these are basically delays due to the Doppler acceleration in some kind of a triple body system. In essence, giving us the first indication that this binary seemed to be located next to some kind of a third massive body, which though could be a third stellar mass black hole, was a lot more likely to be a supermassive black hole that this binary was orbiting. In essence, confirming that a lot of these black hole collisions and the fact that we're seeing so many can indeed be explained because most of them seem to happen in orbits of a lot of different central black holes. With some of the previous studies estimating that a typical central black hole, such as Sagittarius A star, could easily contain millions of smaller black holes in a constant orbit around them. And because many of them are probably binary, these binaries will eventually collide, producing gravitational waves. But why exactly does any of this matter? Well, the ability to detect these gravitational waves and the ability to analyze them so thoroughly essentially opens up a completely new window into the entire universe. We're no longer limited to observe just the electromagnetic spectrum, because now we can listen to the cosmic symphony produced by various objects vibrating the space-time itself. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest and one of the most incredible discoveries in the last few years was the detection of this unusual hum or this unusual vibration that seems to be all over the universe. You can learn about this in one of the videos in the description. And so by hearing these very minute space-time disturbances, we don't just learn about black holes and where exactly they all came from, we're actually slowly learning how to listen to everything in the universe in order to understand it just a little bit better. And that's because gravitational waves, unlike typical light, can basically go through everything without being influenced by anything at all. With NASA even producing this incredible simulation, showing us a map centered on the Milky Way, visualizing the gravitational waves emitted by a lot of different binaries, and also showing us a preview of what will become possible one day when we can actually create gravitational maps of the entire night skies. And so as future observatories become active, and as we're able to detect even more gravitational waves, specifically through detectors like LISA, Taiji, and Tianqin, all of this will allow us to visualize the universe in a way it's never really been possible, helping us understand everything from formation of black holes to fundamental properties of gravity itself. And so this very bizarre scientific journey into the hidden language of the universe itself has just begun. Which means that we'll be discussing this again and again many times in the future. And so until future discoveries, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. Alternatively, you can also buy a wonderful person t-shirt featuring a black hole as well. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.